Big literally space. ever. And we've got a huge triple header of games on ABC. Starts at noon with number six Miami going to Louisville. Hurricanes are 6-0 and for the first time since 2017, but have lived dangerously the last two weeks, rallying back from huge deficits. 3.30 Eastern, Alabama, Tennessee. The Crimson Tide have won 16 of their last 17 meetings, but they've struggled the last two weeks, losing to Fandy and then barely beating South Carolina, so do they bounce back big? And then, maybe the biggest game of the year, 7.30 Eastern, number five, Georgia, number one, Texas. Longhorns are 6-0. Every win has been by at least 19 points. Last time they did that was over 60 years ago. So here's what you are wondering. You're saying in this new world of college football, what do these games actually mean? Who needs to win them more? Well, I'm glad you asked. We have that. Uh, Paul Feinbaum joins us from an art museum this morning. Um, and Heather from her home. Heather Danich, let's start with that. Georgia, Texas. What is at stake in this game relative to the big picture for both these teams? Well, as far as the playoff goes, Georgia needs to obviously try to avoid a second loss, but I would be very careful to eliminate them if they lose a close game. But Greeny, the big picture here too is that Texas has a chance to assert itself as the best team in the SEC, it's first year in the league. I mean, think about what they're going against. Georgia, over the last four seasons, is 29-3 and in the SEC, okay? All three of those losses have been to Alabama. So Georgia doesn't need to add a Texas problem to that list. This is about the big picture in the SEC, too. Paul, how's it shaping up? Hey, uh, Heather is right about a number of those things. And, and to me, Georgia doesn't have a lot of wiggle room, uh, but they because they still have Ole Miss later in the year. But it, what really bugs me about this game for Georgia is the mystique. I mean, this is a program, Greeny, that, that owned college football for three years. They were going for a three-peat, and now they're struggling uh, with a loss here to stay in the playoff race. That's quite a fall. It also, again, to remind people, we're in a new world. I want everyone to understand what we're talking about. Heather, only the conference champions have a chance to get a bye in that playoff. So Georgia could all but kiss that goodbye with a loss on Saturday night, right? Green, yes, it's the five highest ranked conference champions get in this thing. The four highest ranked conference champions earn that first round by. So every week, these teams are not only playing for one of those chances, but seeds five through eight get a first round home game, right? And then you get into, if you're a seed eight versus nine, the winner of that game plays the number one team in the country. So this jockeying for position every week matters. And while there were some concerns that this expanded playoff would devalue the regular season, I would argue for the reasons we just talked about, it matters even more. Absolutely, it's the best season that we've had and this is the best weekend that we've had. Paul, who do you expect to win? I go with Texas. Uh, e even though Georgia has played a more competitive schedule, they beat Clemson handily. They played Alabama uh, to a, to a one-score game in Tuscaloosa. But I, I don't like the, the vibes. Uh, Carson Beck doesn't have a lot of support. The defense has really let Kirby Smart down. How about you, Heather? I'm going to go with Texas, too, because of the depth in that quarterback room, Georgia's inability to run the ball. But I want to add something that – Paul mentioned because it's important in this playoff race if Georgia loses. They do have that convincing win against Clemson. And if Clemson goes on to win the ACC, which it absolutely could, Georgia's ability to claim a win against the ACC champs in that committee meeting room would be huge if they're fighting for an at-large spot. Very quickly, Paul, where are you? I am in Alabama, uh, at, at, uh, not at an art museum. And by the way, the hotel told me I could have this Pablo, not a Picasso, but a Pablo for $3 <laughs> when I check out.